Hey ghouls and goblins, it's Baby Ghoul. Um, hello, if you haven't seen my face, I don't really post it. Um, basically, there was a video that I was going to post before this one on Tillian Pearson's History of SA, but I was, every week I dissect the Twins podcast on my Twitter, which you should go follow at Baby Ghoul, B-A-B-I-E-D-G-H-O-U-L. That's where I do most of my twin tea. Anyways, um, so they posted a podcast yesterday, and Little Miss, I Sold CP, and My Worst Fears, Ariana Grande Finding Out, has spoken about it. And I am so beyond livid, so we're going to watch the clip, and then we're going to dissect it. Let's run the clip. Two Christmases ago was one of the hardest holidays I've ever experienced in my entire life that I just don't want to talk about. Um, but December 1st this year was my two-year anniversary of surviving some something and I, a year ago on December 1st, I remember thinking to myself, I'm so happy. I went through everything that I went through to get to this point because I feel whole. I feel independent. I feel like my life is finally where it's supposed to be. And I was grateful and very present. And if I didn't go through some shit that I went through, I wouldn't have been saying that to myself. But go figure, when I finally feel whole by myself, independent and engaged, I lose it with the person that I thought I was going to be with forever because I had it with myself. And so eventually when I started attracting other beautiful people into my life, it became clear as day that, oh, this is who I needed to be when I was 20, when I was 21. But I had to go through the worst thing in my life. I'm, I li literally want to cry talking about it because just like last week, I was like with one of the people that I really care about. And I was like, I wish I felt like this peace like long ago, but I was like, I was fulfill. I was filling a void for with the years wrong thing. with shopping or instant gratification of a yes man partner or someone who wasn't going to call me out for my shit or like, I just like had distractions surrounding me for years. And you know, with success and money, it was so easy to just like not face my problems and to just, just, just distract myself. So when I was forced into the hardest of years of my entire life, and depression, I, I grew, like, I, I became, like, a human again, I felt like the humanity in me didn't exist, I, I, I didn't realize I was so cold, and so, um, I was so thick-headed. Gabby, I worried for you, even though, like, your last relationship, I wanted that partnership and fun, because I could tell, like, you guys were best friends, um, I could tell that, you weren't being told when you were being wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think you wouldn't have done a lot of the things you did if you had actual people around you that weren't scared to tell you how they really felt. And I think people were around you and, and they were just trying to make Gabby happy at all times. And you can't grow in that kind of no. an environment. And what you went through was like very hard to watch. Um, like that's one of my most depressing Christmases because as a twin, it's like the whole parent thing. You can't be happier than your most sad child. I couldn't be happy no matter the good going on in my life, knowing where Gabby was at. There's no way. This is cute. I love Gabby so much. Like if she what didn't exist, like I couldn't exist. So like that was, oh my God, why am I getting emotional? It just, it's, it was really hard to like watch her learn the hard way. You never want to see someone learn the hard way. A really hard lesson. But I, you know, I kept trying to get through to Gabby. Everyone kept trying to get through to Gabby. But she, everyone has their own journey. And I don't think she would have actually learned, like, and got back her morals. Yeah. If she wasn't thrown on the pavement. Sometimes that's really how people learn and sometimes it's god's like okay i'm gonna let you get drunk at your engagement party with your family and fuck up in front of the whole world because you need to you need to change um, i just remember that year you never paid any attention prior to all my mental health content or videos or anything mental health you didn't it just didn't exist but after that and we've had these conversations where you're like, Nikki, sad holiday. I relate to it. Thank you for putting it out. Messy room, Nikki. Thank you. Like, you listen to lyrics. You never did. Mm -mm. You, you want to know 
you you relate to people now in a way that you never have and it sucked that you had to go through that but this version of gabby is so much more likable and i have like the greatest people around me now like i just feel i felt like that whole situation was just like a whole filtration system like i cut out like the negative titles i used to do and i can't believe you know what it was like the biggest form of like karma because i remember thinking to myself i used to like make checks from youtube using like strangers photos in my thumbnails and outing like their horrible day if like there if something crazy happened in my day and a stranger was involved like i didn't i had no problem like ruining their life and then i just it was like that on crack to me and so i made a vow to myself that from here on out i will not release anything to my platform that isn't positive inspirational and light i want to i wanted to turn my platform into let's do what makes me happy like dresses and vintage and pink and you know mental health speaking on things that i never like used to talk about and because of that i do feel like my world around me has changed for the better to the point where i'm surrounded by so much light and not saying that the friendships i had before were but i was vibrating so low it was either money bags partying drinks like there was no goals there was no album rating there was no seeing the world or so i'm sorry for the light first of all let's go ahead and break down this first thing the thing you don't want to talk about is on december 1st two years ago um, you posted a photo of you as an adult in your bra and underwear saying, guys, I just sent a surprise to your inbox. And then when people went to their inbox, there was a video with the caption, won't keep my panties on, that you had to pay, like, I think it was $3 to unlock. And it was a video of you as a toddler flashing your front, your female genitalia to the camera. So for you to say that this was a drunken mistake after first saying it was trolling and you were wrong and then saying it was an innocent childhood video there's just there's a lot to unpack here this is going to be choppy i'm sorry like first of all if it was such a innocent family video how come you didn't post it how come it hasn't been seen anywhere else since that happened if it was such an innocent family video and then on top of that how would it be how is any innocent family video captioned won't keep my panties on with a blushing face in regards to a toddler in what sense is that ever okay like no you not you being drunk is an excuse in what sense was that okay in what sense was that funny and trolling because you wanted to say it was that secondly if you're supposedly so inebriated like, just so blast off drunk that you thought this was okay. Which there is no level of alcohol that'll ever make this okay. But saying it is, how is it you had the mental capacity to go, okay, I'm going to post this as an adult, and then we'll go over here, and I'm going to mass, I'm going to send everyone this message, and I'm going to set this paywall specifically for this message, because in a lot of the evidence, you see one above it where it said it was like eleven ninety nine, and then this one was like two ninety nine. So you went out of your way to pick the $3.00 as the paywall but you were so drunk so i'm wondering how did you do that i'm just wondering how someone so inebriated could do something so calculated like it genuinely doesn't make sense and then if we're gonna get on top of this like since we're already here have you ever actually owned up to doing something wrong or has it been two years of you playing the victim saying that this horrible thing happened to you that you did to yourself and isn't, didn't you say your worst fear was Ariana finding out? Like, I'm genuinely confused as if it was an accident, and if it was genuinely a mistake, how your worst fear wouldn't be going to jail for committing a literal felony, because that's what you did. You sold, you distributed child corn. That's what you did. And yet your worst fear is Ariana Grande finding out? Not jail? Not being on some sexual predator list? Are you fucking serious? I think the only difference between 25-year-old Gabby and 27-year-old Gabby is that you're blonde. There's literally no difference. You still post the same content, you still overconsume, 
Except you partner with a bunch of fast fashion companies, so you're just wildly unethical, which we all know. You both lack morals, which we all know. Um, so here we are, two years later, and you want to claim to be some different refined bitch. Just because you've chemically cut your hair from how bad you fried it, doesn't magically make you a new person. No, you have to own up for the shit you did and face your music, if you will. Because that's how you grow in life. Instead, all you've done and all your sister's done has been like, Oh my god, ah, uh, pretend it didn't happen. I saw you guys deleted about 69 million views off the Nikki and Gabby channel when that happened. So you can try to run from what you did and you can try to hide from what you did all you want. It really doesn't matter. If you never face what you did and learn from your mistakes and grow as a person, you're going to be stuck at this point. You're going to be stuck crying, trying to convince yourself you're right for the rest of your fucking life until you realize that no amount of alcohol can make that decision. You made that decision. I genuinely can't fathom how someone that inebriated could post two posts, no spelling errors, emojis, intentional emojis, intentional paywall. Like, if you were that drunk, I don't see how that could have happened. And you said it was a joke to begin with. So, I hope at some point you face some sort of repercussions. I hope at some point you can realize that you're in the wrong. But I'm going to go ahead and end this out with you saying that your worst fear was Ariana Grande finding out. Because fuck you. I'm sorry, editing me had to pop in and say her comment about him being a yes partner and then Nikki's comment about how nobody could tell her wrong. Typically, a yes man partner is formed when, out of fear of how the other partner is going to lash out. So I wonder how Gabby lashes out when she gets told that she's fucking up because apparently it was so bad that Colin had to be a yes man for her and all of her friends had to be yes men for her. They all still are, but I just want to throw that out there. I just don't know what to do to get past this because my worst fear is like ariana catching wind of this like what would she think you know what i mean so it's come to my attention after i finished making that video that gabby has deleted the apology and the apology she had posted was pretty much her gaslighting you for about two minutes so i'm gonna go ahead and insert that apology here this video is gonna touch on a very serious topic so i'd like to insert a trigger warning recently my lack of judgment and Poor decisions have led to a very, very serious issue that needs to be addressed. I owe it to you guys. As I was coming up with new ideas and new content, I was watching a home video with my family of myself as a three-year-old when my mom announced that she was pregnant with my younger brother. In that home video, I ruined a beautiful moment by telling everyone that I heard my nanny tell me to put my panties on through a stethoscope. It's a video that has brought back laughter and joy within my family for years, and I shared it with what I thought was a funny caption. It's not funny. It was a quote from the video. Never in a million years did I think something that I thought was so innocent could be looked in such an ugly way. And I think that's where the problem lies. I realized I'm so disattached with reality that it didn't even cross my mind that this could be viewed like this. And that's a serious issue. It's not funny. It will never be funny. And it's not okay. And I'm really sorry. I'm sorry to my friends, my fans, my family, to anyone that I've hurt. I'm so truly sorry. And it was definitely a huge lack of my character and my judgment and I know who I am in my heart and I know that if you know me you would know I would never condone anything like this so it really hurts to know the pain that I've caused for so many people my family my friends my fans my supporters even people who have just simply been triggered by my stupid thoughtless action to everyone I'm very very sorry it was very insensitive and a poor representation of who I am and what I believe in I would never do anything to exploit or harm a child I'm so sorry truly very sorry this is a huge wake-up call I'm gonna step back into reality now and I'm gonna reflect and I love you guys and I'm so sorry I'm, I'm going to grow and learn from this and I will come out of this a better person and I will do better this was really wrong so in your apology it's you were looking for content ideas and were watching a home video with the family. Two years later, it becomes, I was drunk at my engagement party. You're not sorry, Gabby. You deleted your apology. You want to pretend like something atrocious happened to you. And I'm sure you've gone through some shit in your life. 
But what you did was the literal CP. And what you've done is backtracked, lied, and have now deleted your apology. You should not have a space on YouTube. You should not have fans. You should not have TikTok followers. You should not. You're just an awful human. So here you are, two years later, flip-flopping on your story, pretending like you're sorry, but we all know you're not because you're spilling out. This is, what, the second, third story about what happened that night? At first you were coming up with content ideas. Now you are too drunk at your engagement party. Uh, who do you want to believe your bullshit? Susan at YouTube? Whoever runs TikTok? Because you genuinely do not deserve a platform for what you did and what you continue to do. Like, you can't even take accountability for your actions. Your weak-ass attempt of taking accountability, you've taken down. Because you realize how fucked up it makes you look. And because now you're painting a story on your podcast that doesn't align with the videos on your channel. Like how you said you weren't going to rebrand, but you posted that whole video in your closet about a rebrand. You know what? I'll give you this. When you call yourself a beautiful mess, you're half right. You're a goddamn train wreck. And I sincerely hope you get the mental help you need because this is out fucking rageous, bro. It's mind blowing. I, I don't understand how you rationalize this. I don't understand how the people in your life have told you this is okay. But no, no, you don't get to commit a felony and then play what story am I going to go with this year? You sold CP. You knowingly distributed it. You did that. Congratulations. And it's crazy because I genuinely did not think I could be more disappointed in you. But deleting your apology. For the end of this, I'm going to go ahead and cycle some clips so you can pause and read what she did and all that fun stuff. I'm going now. Sorry you had to see this. I'm fucking livid. Hey guys, I have a serious question. I want to wear this dress to dinner with my parents so badly, but one issue, is this see-through? Like, let me know. On that but i've seen a lot of people talk about like rebrand and i don't think i've ever said that online and i don't think that's how everything happening should be perceived i don't want my hair change or certain changes going on with me to be perceived as a, as a rebrand and if you saw my video where i'm cleaning out my closet I mentioned how you don't need to have a lot of money or like expensive materials to be fancy. I'm still making fancy vlogs. Um, the, the reason I changed my name on this channel 
is simply because when I had some time to myself to think, um, I reflected on just some material I was making, not all of it. Some of the videos I was making wasn't in alignment with me or who I am as a person. And also me changing my hair color has nothing to do with the rebrand I'm not I'm not rebranding if anything I'm becoming more of who I am off camera on camera I wasn't faking who I was but I wasn't making content that made me happy I wasn't doing things that made me happy and so I made my name Gabby vlogs instead of fancy vlogs by Gabby not because of everything that's happened but because everything that had happened had led me into more of a deeper self-reflection and I don't want people who look up to me watch my videos and be like oh I'm not fancy because I can't get a Chanel bag like of course like I said rewarding yourself is good here and there but you don't need money you don't need any of that to be girly or fancy and I don't like that message that I was conveying I know a lot of people are like oh taking a week off like oh I'm sure you're learning vlogging is what I love to do it's my passion and it's my hobby um, and I'm gonna keep doing it this is what I love to do and I'm not gonna stop doing it because people are telling me not to like I said and I'll reiterate I can't talk about stuff that's going on offline I li literally can't talk about it all I can do is move forward in a better direction and learn and grow not let mistakes get the best of me I've also been getting a lot of comments from fans saying you guys appreciate my luxury hauls and vlogs My humor is stupid and I'm a troll and I should have thought things through. I truly was just treating my OnlyFans like a Finsta and I would post that on my Finsta. I wasn't trying to sell myself as like a child sex slave. Like I would never do that. I've gone through horrible things as a child and I don't want to talk about it, but that's why I'm so upset that people could think I support that. Um, so please just know like if in the back of your mind if you think it's fucked up no it is fucked up and that i'm really really sorry to let you down and i just don't know what to do to get past this because my worst fear is like ariana catching wind of this like what would she think you know what i mean